Hey guys, it's Thomas. Made it down to Vienna, Indiana Gold Prospectors uh, outing this weekend. Um, I got down here actually yesterday, but it stormed. So I didn't get into the water. But today's Saturday. It's just cloudy right now. I'm hoping that it'll stay that way and then uh, we can get out here and I'm going to try my best. I'm going to get out here and get in the creek as soon as I get finished shooting this part of the video. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we'll have a good day. The water was low. It brung it up some, but it made it muddy. So it uh, so we got a better level, but it's just chocolate. So I'll be doing the dredge bri braille method today. We got some stranger here. I don't know who the hell he is, but he showed up. Where were you going when I saw you? Walmart. Did you? You must have beat me out of there because you were back before me too. Yeah. It didn't take me long. <laughs> yeah, I just went in. I then I had to get some stuff for Jeff. So um, that was all. Go down here and just shoot a little video. Then I'm gonna go get in the water. Uh, I'm heading that way. Yep. So as you can see, we got people, spectators and prospectors alike. How you doing? Got Eric with his blue sluices. What's going on, Eric? How you doing? Thank you, man. Teaching the art of dredging, huh? No, no, he's teaching me. Oh, he's teaching you? <laughs> That's good. I'm going to go down here and get in the water myself. Been the times on the fort. Yep. I thought, yeah. Uh huh. Yep. All right. You guys have fun. Enjoy. Leave a little gold for somebody else. So far, like I said, it's turned out to be a pretty decent day. Looks like all the people who are scared of the weather may have missed out on a decent day because it's cool. It's a little windy, but it still should be a good time to look for some gold. It's just walking back into camp now. Walk out here. There's people kind of out here milling about. Go out here and shoot a little bit of footage from that. Then I'm going to the creek. It's unthought. Morning guys, it's Sunday. Well, it ended up being not too bad of a day yesterday, especially in the afternoon. Um, it sprinkled at one time and then it quit. But then last night it, it rained pretty good. So uh, the water's still chocolate milk. I'm just trying to debate now whether I'm going to go out here and try and dredge by Braille again. But it was a good night, so, um, I mean, it was a good day yesterday. 
Uh, last night wasn't too bad. We were able to sit around for a little while before it started raining and talking. And so it was a pretty good time. Um, I'm going to head back out. I think I'm going to go and I think I'm going to try and go dredge. I'll see here in just a little bit. Yep, it is chocolate milk again. Well, I decided to go ahead and get in the water. Uh, it, it is definitely up today. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the spot I was working in yesterday or not. It's down there that way, but. I don't even see the rock that was even close to working on so I may just kind of float it down there and see if I can find it and uh, see if I can finish up where I was yesterday it was pretty decent gold so if I can get to it it'll be great if not well I'll do something different talk to you guys later hey guys well it's Monday I made it back from the outing last night I was a little tired, so I didn't do anything else. Um, I'm going to sit here and run some cons today. Uh, may show you a little bit through, as I run through this, just just for some of you who may have not seen it. And uh, then once I get done with that, I'll uh, post the pictures at the end of my video, of course, of the gold I get. Right now, I'm just setting up the multi-sluice that I'm going to run. Um, I'm hoping you can see that. I can't really tell by the angle. Um, but so I'm going to set my angles. I use a sluice setter, which gives me the, the angles, the pitch. And I'm going to set it up. I usually set it up pretty close to what Doc says, which is it's about 11 on the the first run with the aggressive mat, and then around 13 for the um, the washer mat. So this needs to go up a little bit, just a hair off. And then I'll level it out. I just usually level it out with the water, which is make sure that the water is level across the bay. So I normally get my pitch first and then I level. It's pretty doggone close. That's 11.9. I'm not going to screw with that anymore. So. Pretty much my pitch for the first run is done. And what I'm gonna do now is turn it on, get some water in the mat. I kind of watch it go down. That kind of gives me an idea of which side is high. And then check it for if it's just level in the mat. Right now the water went straight down on this side and then follow down that side. So I'm gonna say this side is low. So I'm gonna up, bring this up. And it doesn't change the pitch much because usually, you know, you're within a degree or so. Okay, and that time the water flowed pretty much straight down. So I'm pretty confident that that's level, but I'll, I'll stop this. And then I'll just look at the water in the mat. And it's pretty level. All right, I'm set up and ready to start this. And... I'm going to run this a little slow. I've got a lot of black sand in this material that I know for sure. Um, so I'm going to run it a little slower than what I normally run it. Normally I would just kind of pound it through with no problem. And uh, usually get done in probably about 5 to 10 minutes. That would be on a normal. That would be normal. But today I'm probably going to run it just a little bit slower. Like I said, I know i got tons of black sand in here. So I'm going to give this time to uh, work itself down and through. So, here we go. Normally I would just go one after the other and go through. But I'm going to let it kind of clear out. And I've classified this down to a quarter inch. So, I classify it down at the, uh, at the creek and then to a quarter inch. So, when I get here, my first one, all I have to do is just run 
episode. I'll run this through and um, then I'll run the washer mat. I'll show you that. And then I may just show you the raw pan when I get done. And then, of course, I'll have a photo of my gold at the end of the video. So I'm going to spare you this rest of this and then I'll show you when I put the washer mat in. Washer mat. I mean, yeah, not the washer mat. I just finished up the aggressive mat. Um, I'm going to take this apart. Well, first off, I like to kind of preset it before I start. So, on the second with the washer mat, second run, put in the reducer. So now that's already set up. Pump the setup. So I'll just go ahead and put my bungee cord, put the water in here. So I tend not to like to brush it over that. I'll just stick it right here. Now, I'm not in gold country, so. I don't expect to see a lot of big flakes. You know, normally I can't even see the gold because normally it's buried underneath um, all the black sand and stuff. But I'll show you what the mat looks like anyway. Who knows? You never know. Every once in a while I get surprised. So let me just pick this up here. Now, before I get started doing that though, I'm going to concrete up this mat. If you ever watch the videos for Doc's Gold Hog Matting. Just tilt it to the side and let the water drain. And what that does is that concrete up this mat so the material doesn't move, it's locked in, everything's locked in place. up here and let's see what we, if we can see anything uh, well, there's just a little bit there don't know if you can see that it's a little bit in that line there let's see if I can get out of the light there's a few small small pieces oh there's a decent flake and there's a decent flake right there Wow pretty flat but it's a really decent piece there okay well lots of iron as you can see all this iron in here so oh, I was definitely in the heavies there's pieces of metal all over the place uh, there's some lead in there oh, there's another small piece of gold oh, there's another one there oh I must have hit a pretty decent spot now I'm mad I didn't get to be able to spend more time in that spot Okay, but anyway, hopefully you can see that. And I will show you how I clean out the mat. I'm hoping this is showing. I don't know if my angle's right on this thing. Um, I'll show you me cleaning out a mat here and then setting it up for the next run. Okay, I'm gonna move this mat and then go ahead and get it all processed. Trying to get these if I can stay out of the way of you. So basically, I'm just gonna pull it up easy. It's kind of hard doing it from this side. Usually not this hard, but all right. So then I just take it, put it in the bucket. Tangle up here. Because normally I don't do it from that side, so just gonna take my mat, push it down into the bucket. got to do is roll it up kind of make sure I keep it in the bucket so 
everything falls off and goes into the bucket. Good thing about his match is they fit the bucket, so it makes life a whole lot easier. So I roll it up, dunk it, bring it over, dunk it. May not even have to do it that many times, but I do. Reverse roll it. Pretty clean right now, so it's really. And it's the same mats I use in my dredge, so uh, old hog matting. So you do that, and basically you're done. Mats clean. So now I'm done with this mat. I'm gonna go ahead and set up for the other, set up the washer mat. And I'll get it set up for the next run here. I've gotten pretty good at figuring out where I need to place this mat in to get it to work. So just put it in here. sure it's all down firm. Now that's down in there. What I've still got yet to do, I'll go ahead and set this up. Is my for my next run, I gotta classify I gotta classify this material down. To, I use it classified down to a 20 mesh. We got planes today for some reason. Planes are all over the place. I'll classify it down to 20 mesh. And, and what I'm classifying is, gosh, I'm gonna keep tangled up in this stuff here. Because I don't work that side. Let's see if I can move it further out. And so, um, I'll classify that bucket there, my, my tailings from the run. I'll classify that into, down to a 20 mesh. And I have this. I carry the Martin, the Martin classifier. I love this thing because it sits right into a bucket. And... Classify that material, then get that material set up. I'll run that material on the gold on the, on the multi sluice, and then I'll have all my cons. I'll put it in the pan. I'll show it to you. And like I said, I may just show you the, what it looks like just raw. Uh, maybe I'll show you a little bit of the water table, but um, and that's it. I mean, I'll show you a little bit of the run of the washer mat, and then we'll go from there. One of the things I do is when I classify my material and I use my tailings from the first run, I just take that and then just kind of dump it into another pail. And what I'll do later is, is I'll go ahead and pan that stuff just to make sure something big didn't sneak past me. But most of the times, no. But every once in a while, you'll find a flake that may not pass through that 20 mesh. So. Um, I just how I normally do my classifying for my second stage here. Okay, on Gold Hogs Forum, Gold Hogs Forum, um, someone had came up with an idea of drilling a half inch depth hole in a block of wood so you don't have to change, um, keep changing your legs up and down for your second run. So um, I did. I uh, just put the blocks up under your back legs here. And now, I don't have to change my leg position. I've already moved it up now to, to a 13, roughly a 13 degree pitch. And I'm ready to run. So that's a little step saver for people with the multi-sluice. If you haven't seen that on the forum, then there you go.
It's real simple, real easy. Makes life a lot simpler on you. And you don't have to readjust. So I'm gonna run the I'm gonna run the stripper mat, which is which is exactly what it sounds like. It strips out everything but the gold and the black sand, finest you know, the heaviest of the black sand. So I'm gonna run this through. I'll probably run this through probably about the same rate, so I should be done. Normally under normal under normal situation, it probably takes me, because I'm doing it by myself, about an hour to run a bucket of material, and that's all the way to to include uh, running it on the water table. Um, because once I get done here, I'll probably, I may have half, three quarters cup of material. Um, so I normally kind of run it a little slower on the water table, so it'll probably be about an hour, hour, maybe hour, hour and a half, somewhere around there. All right, I'm going to get this started and get this ran, and then um, I'll go on to the next process. Okay, I'm getting ready to run this material through the water table. I've got it set up. Um, I'm going to play with the adjustment here in just a little bit. It may be running a little steep, so I'll give it a shot and uh, see how this goes. material has a lot of iron in it. Actually, I don't think I have it steep enough for me. Lower it here just a little bit. I think I got it lowered a little bit more. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? One thing I gotta do is I need to screen this out one more time on the 20, on the 20 mesh. So let me, let me do that and then I'll come back and finish up. So after my final classification, as you can see, it's about half a cup of cons. That's what I have left the process now. So I'll get that done here and I'll show you some more on the water table. I got it classified down now. Now, now let's try and see what this looks like. I forgot about classing it down to my final 20, 20 mesh. So I still had big pieces of iron and stuff in it. Normally, I classify it one more time down to 20 mesh to get all the big stuff from the first run of the of the uh, multi sluice. Because that first run, remember everything is at a quarter. So anything that got through would be a quarter inch. So now that I've gotten it classified down to a 20 mesh, then I don't have those big pieces of iron and pieces of lead and I have a lot of lead fragments, which kind of once again tells me I'm in a, I was in a pretty decent spot. A lot of lead, a lot of lead fragments. And what I'll do then is I'll just uh, put it all in the pan and pan out the lead and stuff once I get done with this portion of it. He's trying to escape me. So when you're doing a water table, you just got to make sure you watch stuff because 
sometimes go want to move down the table on you. So just kind of look and keep an eye on it, and most of it will stay pretty much where it is. But you'll get some that'll that'll want to move. I don't know how well you can see it, but the gold should be showing up. The gold is showing up right now pretty good. Right now I'm just trying to get some of the lead fragments out of here. See, there's a lot of lead fragments. Try to get it as clean as possible here so that when I go to pan it, pan out the final little bits of garbage, I don't have as much to do. This one's going to be a little rougher because I have a lot of lead fragments, so I have to get those out on the final pan. But from the first spoon, hopefully, you can see that. That's the little pile from the first spoon. So if the rest of it's like this, it should be, that means I had a pretty decent spot. Nice flake in there. Still pulling out some pretty decent gold for, for a little spoonful. So I'll keep going and see how this comes up. Well, I finished my cleanup. I got the gold dried and that's what it looks like I got. So I'll weigh it up and I'll put it, put it in the end of the video with the picture. So, but it looks like a good day considering I only got to do eight hours out of a, out of a three day weekend. So it turned out to be pretty good. So I just can't wait to get back to that spot because I've got some serious dredging to do. So until next time, guys, I'll see you out there.